We're going to start our first pattern making class today and we're going to start with skirts. I'm going to put a little eye card up in the corner so you can find all the materials that um, I'm using here today and started by just tracing up a whole bunch of my little slopers on tissue paper. You can just use old tissue paper from wrapping or you can even use old wrapping paper is a great way to work. Now I'm doing half scale but if you want to do this full scale um, in your size this is this type of pattern you want to buy. It is a sloper pattern. This one's from Vogue, but you can find them from other pattern companies too. They come in one size. This one just is a single size in it. So get the closest to your size and then you will do all the fitting alterations to it so that you have a personalized sloper that you can use for pattern making. It's a great thing to do when you really want to start doing designing for yourself. Or And you can also get children's and men's slopers. So lots of options depending on what it is you want to work on. So I traced off using my little cardstock slopers um, a bunch of pieces. So we're going to just work with a front and back skirt today. So here's my back. It's easy to tell the front from the back because the back has longer darts than the front because there's a little more fitting to do. And you want to make sure when you um, transfer your markings that you do put that hip line in there, the horizontal hip line and you need some tape. Tape is super important and I think tape on a dispenser is the best. So we're going to just pull off some tape and we're going to tape at the bottom of each dart right at the point. So we're not closing up the dart or going into the leg, it's just at the point because we're going to create a hinge. When we slash through, which you'll see us do in a minute, and spread, we want to make a little tiny hinge. So we're going to go through, or two but not through, so here I am, I'm going to um, use that hip line to help me make a, a straight line so I don't get my lines too wonky or crooked. And the, re the reason is it changes your hemline depending on where that line is slashed through the pattern. It'll actually change the way the hem falls. So I want to make my line as straight as I can on the grain line or to the center front and that hip line helps me keep my ruler straight. So I'm going right through the dart point, straight through the middle, and straight down to the hem, using that nice clear ruler to keep everything lined up. So I'm going to do that for both darts. And what happens is when I close this dart in a minute, which you'll see, all the fullness that's in the dart, all that fitting, gets moved to the hem. And because I have a short dart leg going into a long piece, you can see how long the new line is going to be, it actually opens up quite a bit. So we're going to go from a straight skirt to an A-line skirt. We're making an A-line skirt here. An A-line skirt without darts. Now it's still going to fit nicely. So now I'm going to just cut up to but not through that dart point and it's going to have the teeny tiniest little paper hinge with some tape over it to make it secure. There, can you see see how nicely that moves? I've got a teeny tiny hinge. If your hinge is too long, you'll get a buckle in your pattern, so you want to make it as small as possible. Okay, now that I have cut both of those through, and you can see how easily they move, I'm going to grab another small piece of tape and I'm going to tape shut my darts. Now remember, slopers have no seam allowance on them yet, so we're just matching dart leg to dart leg. And you can see how wide that small dart opened up that um, the skirt down at the bottom, how much it opened up the hem. So now I'm just going to pin that shut with the dart legs just touching, not overlapping, because if we overlap them it will change the fit, it will make, the, it make it smaller at the waist. And now that I've done the first one, I'm going to go ahead and do the second one here. And now look at how full that skirt is. Look at the difference between the skirt um, that I haven't altered in the skirt that I have. See the difference in the fullness at the hem? And now we're going to do the same thing to the back because you know what we do to the front, we do to the back so that we have a nice even pattern piece. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again with this one. Doing the exact same thing, making sure everything's lined up straight, cutting up two but not through that dart end. All right, so here I am with my back. We're doing the exact same thing. Grab a little piece of tape. We're going to close up that dart by just making 
the dart legs meet and pinning it or taping it down nice and secure and you can see how much it opens it up so now we have two little pieces and they're kind of flimsy they kind of look like a car wash skirt right now with those little legs so we're going to mount them on another piece of tissue paper and finish our pattern we're going to add all the important markings like how much to cut and add seam allowance etc now normally when I do this I just um, mount them on another piece of the same paper but for you I think it's much easier for you to see if I do it on a contrast now I've gone ahead and put some markings on this paper I've done one vertical line that um, is going to line up with my front and my back of my skirt to keep it straight and then I've done a horizontal line that's sort of like the hip line at the front and that just helps me keep my pattern straight on the paper um, as I'm pinning it taping everything down and you want to make sure that you tape this down so that you have enough room to draw all the way around it to add seam allowances and hems and things so you don't want to get it off too much or you you will have um, a problem when you're going to do your markings so I'm just going to tape this down real quick using my lines my guidelines that I've given myself and I'm matching up the guidelines on the pattern to those lines I added to the tissue paper and we're going to just tape it down and you can see if I wasn't paying attention how easily I could get that off and then I would have to tape lots more papers in the corners for my seam allowances all right I've got the front pretty well taped down and I'm just going to now go ahead and add my markings to this I'm just moving it around to make it easy for me now because I'm working in half scale I'm not going to put 5 8 inch seam allowances on this I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance now if you're working in a full scale pattern you want to add your 5 8 or 3 quarters or however wide a seam allowance you want if you're doing something where you're only surging it and you know you're going to surge off your seam allowance do a 3 8 inch seam allowance and save yourself a tiny bit of fabric if you're doing lots of these like if you're making something to sell then going with the smaller seam allowance actually does save you fabric if you're going to be surging it anyway hems are usually um, like if you want an inch hem it'll have an inch and a half or so included at the bottom so you have turn up and then your hem for my half scale I'm going to do a three-quarter inch that's the what relates um, for this size so I'm going to just do three-quarter inch for my hem at the bottom and I'm just slowly moving my ruler the nice thing about these clear rulers is you can see straight through now I didn't true up my lines here and if it makes it easier for you go ahead and true those up like I just did and continue to do your little markings. So I've added si um, quarter inch seam allowances and three quarters of an inch hem at the bottom. And then I have to make decisions like, do I want to seam down the center front or do I want this to be cut on the fold? Because it's a skirt, at some point we're gonna have to add a zipper or buttons or something to get in it. For this one, I'm just going to have the center front cut on the fold. And you need to make sure you write that on there set or front cut on fold put your little arrows and markings etc that show what that means the three little dots are the um, full center front fold markings and you can also do the little arrows which I have on here and now I'm going to do the exact same thing to the back but on the back it's not going to be cut on the fold I need to have a zipper so I'm going to add seam allowance to the center back of this otherwise it's going to be the same so I'll show you this when I'm finished with it. One nice thing about working with the back with the seam allowance is it's a nice straight line so it's easy to add the seam allowance on here just line up your ruler and draw a straight line. The easiest seam allowance on the whole thing. Now for these patterns the grain line usually is your center front and center back so I did not draw a grain line on these but if you wanted to change it you could have bias grain line or something like that. Don't forget to write how many to cut etc so it says skirt back cut to you can even put markings in there for where the zipper is and I'm marking quarter inch seam allowance and three quarters of an inch hem on these so that I have the information I need when I go to sew it this is the same thing you'll do when you're making a full scale pattern for yourself too and there it is so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out just so you can see how they look completed All right, these are so cute. I just think half scale patterns are adorable. They just are. So an A-line skirt's a nice, simple skirt, easy to wear and often very flattering. And here you can just see the difference between, sorry, I'm always hitting the camera, 
between my original pattern piece and so there's the original sloper you can see how narrow it is so there's the backs and there's the fronts and not only is it narrower but the original pattern piece does not have seam allowances, hems, etc. Now you could lengthen this. I didn't. So right now these pattern pieces are about knee length. That's about what the um, sloper length is. So that's what these are. Now you can, there you go, and kind of see the difference in the shape of the pattern after altering. All right, now we're going to do another full skirt. I'm going to do, I'm going to take the same pattern that I just did and I'm going to show you how to make an even fuller skirt. So let's say an A-line skirt's fine, but you want a much fuller hemline than what I did. So we're going to start with our A-line skirt again. So this is the exact same alterations that, we've did bef that we did before, but we're going to actually do a couple more slash and spreads. This time we don't have a dart to work with, so we're going to actually slash all the way up to the waistline and leave a teeny tiny hinge at the waistline. The more lines you slash, the, um, the more you can add. You can, do, you, can, you can do quite a bit with just one slash. You can um, hinge that as much as you want, but it changes how the hem is. So if you do even little slashes around your pattern piece, it's going to make that hem fall better. So you can see here, I'm doing, I'm trying to kind of keep them even. So there's one on the side seam, and you can see it's about the width uh, between the two darts. So that's going to give me a nice, my hemline is going to fall better by doing it that way. And then I'm going to put dark, a piece of tape at the top for my hinge so that I don't have a problem. And I'm just going to cut all the way up. Do you like my leftover Christmas tissue paper here? It has glitter in it. It's showing up in the camera better than I thought it would. Okay, so now that I've cut to my little hinge, two but not through, now it really looks like a car wash skirt. If you cut through, you can always tape it back and recut it. Now this is my center front, so I'm not going to be adding seam allowance to the front. You could, you could have a seam there if you want to. And then see how, as I move out that little leg, look at how much fuller the skirt is. And what you want to do usually is have all of those little slashes evenly spaced and that's going to make your skirt fall and undulate in a pretty way. Now you may want all the fullness in one area and if that's the case you'll you slash and spread accordingly. It's a design detail, it's up to you, you get to choose. So I'm just going to now tape this down and add all my same markings as I did before and I'm going to make a back to match. Okay, I want to show you one more thing that you can do for making these skirts. If we start again with our little A-line skirt and this time I just traced off my original pattern and it's really hard to see on this red um, and I'm sorry about that. I didn't realize how hard it would be to see when I was tracing it. I could see it great, but there's the A-line pattern just like the original one we did with the turquoise in the background. I've traced it off and now what I'm doing is I'm making little lines up through it to add godets. So all this is is I've measured out evenly. You're going to have to look closely to see it but I've measured out about the, from the center front because the center front's on the fold so I've only measured over one inch for that because when it's opened it will be two inches and then two inches over two inches over and then how deep I want my godet so I have these little lines that go up through now I'm not slashing and spreading all the way up these are going to be cutting lines for sewing these are cutting lines for sewing not pattern making that I'm going to be changing the paper pattern on at all so I'm just making these cutting lines and then I'm going to make a little triangular piece that fits into those for godets. Now if you haven't seen a godet before, I'm telling you, they're a great way to add interest and fullness only at the hem or at, you can do them on a sleeve, you can make a peplum with them. At making my little pattern piece, don't forget to add your seam allowance to it also for the godet. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. It's literally a triangle, so we're, I'm making the center of my triangle and then I'm working out from that, so the point, however wide I want my godet, you will hinge from the point and go out. So if I want a two inch godet, I'm going to draw one inch on each side of the center line to give me a nice even triangle. Now you can make curved godets, you can do a lot of things with your godets, but we're starting simple. So here I am with a, just a two inch godet, two inch wide, four inches long 
plus some hem and seam allowance, etc. in there. So I haven't added the seam allowance yet, but the hem's included because I used my previous pattern piece that already had the hem on it. So I just have to add seam allowance on the sides. And I'm making a little godet here. Okay, so this is what it looks like drawn out. And then when I go to sew, I'm actually going to be cutting my fabric piece on all of those little lines. And, and I'm sorry, they're hard to see on the red. Um, but all those little lines, I'm going to be cutting up on the fabric and then sewing these little godet pieces. So I may cut only one of the skirt, but I'm going to be cutting eight of the godets to go into the front skirt. And then you would do the same thing for the back. Now I'm only going to do a skirt front for the godet um, for my example. But I am going to sew these up for you and let you see what they look. Okay, so here's our A-line skirt. That's what this little pattern piece was. And this is how it looks sewn up. And you can see it's just a real straightforward, simple little A-line. And you can see how it falls. I, these are all sewn in muslin. I didn't turn up the hem or anything on it. I just sewed the side seams so there's no waste or anything. This is the fuller one where we added, we did the extra fullness for the, um, to make a little bit wider skirt. And this is what it looks like. It's that pattern piece right there. Simple, simple. And I think it looks so cute. Very flattering. And of course you could lengthen any of these. I didn't, they're all knee length right now. Okay, here's the godets. I kind of got it wonky. I only did the front, but there you can see see how it's pretty fitted at the hip and all the fullness is at the hem when those godets are sewn in. So it has lots of little tiny triangles sewn into that hemline. It's great for dancing, it gives quite a flourish, but it makes a great sleeve and peplum too. All right, that's it for skirts. We'll see you next time.